His name is Purdom, his first name Charles, his second Benjamin. The man was known as CBP. Charles Benjamin Purdom, a highly dedicated and a staunch proponent of the Garden City's concept, a man who devoted his life to the development of Welling Garden City and lived there for 45 years. C.B. Purdom was born in 1883 in South Lambeth, London, the eldest of four. His father, an educated man, worked as a carriage driver. The family lived in abject poverty, not a penny in the house. Only a few pieces of furniture, painted sugar cases instead of chairs. C.B., from the age of 10, worked after school hours and during the holidays in a store no time for games, the family needed the money, there was no alternative, a boy robbed of his childhood. Any spare time was spent reading biographies, poetry, Shelley, Tennyson, philosophy and classics like Shakespeare and Dickens. He would also drag his brothers to art galleries and museums, a man of culture was born. He left school at 14, worked in various stores during the day, the evening studying at night classes, longing to escape the slums of London. In his childhood notes, he writes, I hated my life. Then one day in 1901, age 18, he picked up a book called Tomorrow, A Peaceful Path to Real Reform, written by Ebenezer Howard reprinted as Garden Cities of Tomorrow. This book changed his life. A year later, he spotted an advert in the Daily News. The newly formed Garden City Pioneer Company was looking for staff. CBP immediately applied and got the job of June Clark. He was now 20 years old. In 1903, 4,000 acres were purchased between Hitching and Baldock, where Letchworth was to be established, and CBP was asked to set up an office there as company manager. He became the first new resident of a deserted countryside, a few scattered cottages and a 12th century church. People were scarce, and again, as in his childhood, he spent his evenings in solitude, reading. He drove business visitors across the estate in a small pony cart in cold weather. Even the rain would not discourage visitors exploring the soggy site. With the Letchworth First Garden City Exhibition Cottages, CBP became responsible for the company's finance and accounts, and after a year, all cottages were sold. At the same time grew his love for theatre. Influenced by Tolstoy's book, What is Art?, CBP formed the Letchworth Dramatic Society. He gave the first performance by English players of Bernard Shaw's censored play, The Shoeing of Blanco Posnet. Producing classics and writing three Garden City pantomimes, the theatre became an all-consuming passion and he reached a considerable reputation. During that time, he met a young and beautiful member of the theatre group, Antonia Cutler. They fell in love and married in 1912 and soon started a family. In 1913, CBP wrote his first book, The Garden City, A Study in the Development of a Modern Town. Then came the First World War. The war ended all Garden City activities and his involvement with Letchworth. He enlisted and was sent to France. The end of the war is a new start. Back in England and while at St Mary's Barracks, Chatham, CBP published a pamphlet on the future of Letchworth, prompting the revival of the Garden City movement after the war. 
Ebenezer Howard was impressed by the idea. He traveled to Chatham to discuss CBP's theory, insisting that they should work together. And with Frederick Osborne, they formed the National Garden Cities Committee. Then one day, towards the end of 1918, something decisive happened. CB was now then back in Letchworth. During regular commuting journeys between London and Letchworth and passing over a viaduct, both Howard and CB noticed a long stretch of desolated land. Howard decided that this is to be the site for a new garden city. Purdom asked Osborne to join them both on a walk over the land and there the Wedding Garden City adventure started. CBP contributed a few hundred pounds to the project, as did six other friends of Howard's. In 1920, Wedding Garden City Limited is formed, Theodore Chambers is appointed chairman and CBP finance director. In the meantime, between 1919 and 1933, he was made responsible for the International Federation for Housing and Town Planning and appointed secretary of the Town and Country Planning Association, as well as editor of its monthly journal. The family moves from Letchworth to Handside Lane, Welling Garden City. CBP writes and publishes Town Theory and Practice. He becomes Managing Director and Finance Director of the Welling Stores Limited, Managing Director of the Cherry Tree Restaurant and Managing Director of the Welling Theatre. He writes and publishes The Building of Satellite Towns. CB's passion for the theatre was still burning. He created the Welling Garden City Theatre Society. Numerous performances are given, first at the cherry tree, then in the annex of the stalls, as well as in the brick wall barn. The Theatre Society firmly established, he enters the British Drama League's first national competition with his production of Mr. Sampson. He wins the Lord Howard de Walden Award out of 130 contestants from around the country. Following his triumph in May 1927, C.B. and his actors sailed for New York to enter that same production of Mr. Sampson in a competition on Broadway called the Little Theatre Tournament. Welling Garden City was to wake up one Sunday morning to the news that the production had won the Belasco Cup, which was to be the pride of the city. Cablegrams of congratulations spread across the Atlantic at the same time when the winners were returning to England on the Tuscania, Lindbergh was flying over them with the spirit of St. Louis. But soon after his return from New York, highly dramatic events occurred and attacks were perpetrated against CBP. The attacks coincided with the opening of the new Embassy Theatre in 1928 and the creation of the Welling Garden City Repertory Company. Without any inkling of what was going to happen, CB was suddenly and ruthlessly rejected by those with whom he used to work and abandoned by people he regarded as his friends and colleagues. The effect on him was devastating. Sir Harry Pete, the company's auditor, was given the task by the board to investigate the accusations and attacks made against CB and to write a full report on the crisis. His report exonerated CB but was ignored by the board. A sustained campaign against CBP was initiated by officials of the company the reasons were not disclosed publicly or recorded on the board's minutes and remain obscure to this day. But CB resigned from all his positions at Welling Garden City Limited with a heavy heart. He left his work in Welling Garden City with a sense that his life had ended. 
Fortunately, Hugh Dent offered CB the prized position of manager and editor of the weekly literary paper Every Man. John Spedden Lewis invited him to join the John Lewis Partnership at their offices in Oxford Street. Later, in 1933, he was appointed editor of the new weekly paper New Britain, a non-party journal which called for a new Britain, better humanity by improving social conditions. By that time, the Purdom family had grown. After the two boys, Ronan and Philip, came Barbara in 1921 and Edmund in 1926, born at Digswell Lodge. CB becomes at that time the co-founder of the Welling Garden City Rotary Club. In 1928, the family moved to 36 Parkway, where a blue plaque is now affixed, and CB publishes the Swan Shakespeare comedies. While visiting friends in Devon during the summer of 1931, CB made a decisive encounter. He met an Indian visitor named Meher Baba, a spiritual master that opened a new phase in CB's life. He does not convey this message by speaking, but by his mere presence. A year later, CB writes Baba's biography, The Perfect Master, CB was to the end of his life a devout follower of his philosophy. The same year, CB publishes A Plan of Life, a practical essay in The Technique of Living, where he explains that a plan for a life is as much needed as a plan for the nation and even mankind. At the 1935 local elections, CB is elected at the UDC as development councillor. Soon after, two terrible tragedies hit the family. Struck in their prime, CB's two eldest sons die. First, Ronan, killed in a cycling accident at the age of 22. Then, a year and a half later, Philip dies suddenly at the age of 20 of an undetected intestinal condition. The effect of the loss on the family was profound. Both Barbara, who was then 16 years old, and Edmund, 10, experienced an intense grief, marking their lives forever. The two front-stained glass windows at St. Bonaventure Church are in memory of the two deceased young men. Barbara became a ballet pupil at Sadler's Wells and later opened her own ballet school in Geneva. My grandfather, C.B. Purdom, reminds me of King Lear and the uttermost sufferance they both went through, the tragedy of their lives, and how they both grew through consciousness and awareness and um, went towards the light. King Lear, when he had his daughter in his arms, and... Um, my grandfather with Mayor Baba, who, who helped him a great deal and helped him to realize himself through love, which enabled him to do all he did. Only 25 minutes after war has been declared comes the first air raid warning. In 1938, as the Second World War was starting to rage, the family moved to 34 Barleycraft Road and CB was invited to join Equity, the Actors' Union, as General Secretary. There was a crisis in the association and CB's task was to reorganize and create a new basis of work. That year, he also joined the London Theatre Council as Joint Secretary. During the war years, CB occupied several positions in the government. Finance Officer at the Ministry of Food, followed by the Ministry of Supply and Industry. Finally, in 1944, he became News Editor at the Ministry of Information, covering D-Day. In 1945, after the war and the decimation of parts of London, he publishes his vision of a plan to rebuild the capital. How should we rebuild London? The book was a success and immediately sold out. 
That same year, CB became a founder member of the Guild of Drama Adjudicators and its first secretary. His influence on festival work and amateur theater is quickly acknowledged. His book, Drama Festivals and Their Adjudication, established that influence. Edmund, after leaving school, joined the Northampton Repertory Company and became an actor, taking him to Hollywood and towards fame. It's the first time anyone's ever cried over me. <laughs> Deep in my heart I have a dream of you. The Student Prince and the Egyptian in 1954. CB continued to publish books on theater, such as Producing Shakespeare, What Happens in Shakespeare, A Guide to the Plays of Bernard Shaw, and Granville Barker, Man of the Theater, followed by the Shaw Barker Letters correspondence between two great men of the theater whom C.B. knew personally. He became a respected theater critic, intimately connected to the professional theater. He lectured on drama at the London University and founded the Shakespeare Stage Society. He also wrote in daily newspapers, as well as to well-known actors and writers who in turn replied to his letters. Amongst them, Sir John Gilgud, Sir Laurence Olivier, and the actress Flora Robeson. In 1963, Charles and Antonia celebrated their golden anniversary. The reception took place at the Cherry Tree restaurant. They were then living in Woodland Rise. C.B. spent the last years of his life lecturing on Shakespeare and the fundamental law of drama, as well as on modern dramatists such as Eugene O'Neill and on Mir Baba's philosophy. He naturally continued to be an incessant letter writer. Vanessa, what do you remember of grandfather as a man? If you looked in his eyes, you could see that strength and kindness, but then we were grandchildren, but I'm sure it was deep down who he was as a person. Someone very wise, who became wise with life, and he passed that on to us. In 1965, he became ill and died of complications after abdominal surgery. He is buried at the Hatfield Hyde Cemetery. In 1967, he was voted and ranked by readers of the magazine Amateur Stage, one of the six people who had the most influence and made the greatest contribution to amateur theater since 1946. Edmund, then a well-known star, visited his mother, then very lonely, in Welling Garden City in 1970, where she died a year later. He proudly walked around the town he was born in. What is left to remember C.B. Purdom in Welling Garden City today? What they really do need to remember was that he was the prime mover in the revival of the Garden City movement. And his total dedication, of course, to, um, to Welling Garden City and the whole movement. And then, of course, you have his theatrical productions, putting Welling Garden City in the spotlight in New York, in London. A memorial bench near the fountain on Parkway was placed by his wife, Antonia, a blue plaque on 36 Parkway, and recently a Purdom Road on the outskirts, far from the town center. None of these seem to describe his achievements or measure up to the tributes made to some of his colleagues, none remembering him as one of the three original founders of Welling Garden City 